revisit my drive setup. So as you can see, as of right now, this instant, the setup that's actually current, well, it won't be current soon because you'll see, we have a 160 gigabyte, well, system boot drive. And for, of course, all of the programs. Then we've got a um, external drive. That's actually the 320 gigabyte in my passport. And uh, so that drive is actually doing duty as a ISO storage. And we've got my files drive, which is obvious. It's 500 gigabyte Western Digital Caviar Blue. Or Scorpio Blue, I believe is what they actually call them. Two terabyte Toshiba external drive. That's this one. This is the one terabyte that I'm about to mention, which is right there. We've got another 500 gigabyte Western Digital Caviar Blue that's actually in a Seagate enclosure, ironically. Um, that's storing virtual hard drives, VHDs, and all those kinds of things. And then we've got this 80 gigabyte Western Digital Caviar IDE drive in this enclosure. And that is just storing other random junk. The problem here is not the fact that I'm running out of space on this but rather the fact that I don't have enough space on this drive, which is storing my hard drive images. It's just not enough anymore. So I needed to get a new drive, and I actually wanted performance, a performance increase from running over USB 2.0. And um, considering this computer has an eSATA port, I decided that I would try and take advantage of that and uh, go ahead and use eSATA for something for once. Not sure how well it's going to work just yet, but we can find out. So, let's take a look at what we got. What we've got is a uh, two-fold. that out of the way. We've got a Vantech Nexstar CX eSATA and USB 2.0 interface. Aluminum case, eSATA USB, plug and play, easy install. It is only USB 2.0, but I don't care. This is specification, SATA 1 or 2. Whatever. eSATA USB 2.0 includes the enclosure, power adapter, USB cable, eSATA cable, and all of the stuff that I need. Like I said, I'm going to be taking advantage of the eSATA connections that this thing supports. So, as for hard drive that I'm going to put in here, hold your gasps, hold your shocked surprises. This is the drive that I ended up getting. And yes, that is no lie. This is a Seagate Barracuda 2 terabyte. Uh, actually, I don't quite know what this is because they changed their naming scheme. So it doesn't say like 7200.13 or whatever on it. But I'd assume that it's probably a 7200 RPM drive. Since most of these are anyway. This thing has got a one year, well, it's it's got one year. I got the uh, $9 one year um store policy warranty thing so I can replace this directly in a, like if it fails within the next year I can replace it directly like that like if it's DOA or something plus it's got a three-year manufacturer warranty I know that the laptop drives are five-year these ones are only three but that's okay um, and it's been a while since I've actually tried Seagate drives so I figure well I might as well give them a shot that and this was a really cheap drive. Um, there was a WD 2 terabyte green drive. That was the only other real 2 terabyte drive that I was willing to spend the money on that was under $100. I wasn't willing to spend over 100 on a 2 terabyte drive. Which I suppose makes me a cheapskate, but... Well, hey, it's a birthday present. I don't really want to, um... Not quite sure what that just was, but anyway. 
Don't really want to um, force people to spend too much money. WD Green Drive or this? And I haven't heard too many flattering things about the WD Green Drives, so I figure, well, what the hell? What's the worst that could happen, right? Famous last words. Let's unbox this junk and uh, see what we got. SATA cable, get it right, right, right around, plug it into the computer. We're gonna have to figure out this cable arrangement. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't go the other way, so it only goes this way. Alright, think it could work? Let's find out. That's a cool startup sound. Alright, we've got something. see what we got. Let's go into computer management, figure this out. Detective driver if I'm going to be doing some other work. I wish that they could give you 90 degree angle connectors for ESATA, but well, beggars can't be choosers, so. Okay, loading disk configuration. Let's see if there's anything on that disk, or if it needs to be initialized. If it needs to be initialized, that's okay. I don't have any problem with that. Come on, load the configuration. Needs to be initialized. Initialized with master boot record. That's good. Aha. Perfect. Expand the whole drive. Sure, make it the M drive. Why not? Format as videos since that's what's going to be on it just perform a quick format 
See it there? I am liking that enclosure. It is already so much better than this one with its little mini sun on the front of it. I'm going to be glad to be finally rid of that. Uh, so we've got videos uh, as the M drive. And we can now begin moving files around. So I'm going to uh, actually, let's do a test here. Let's try moving this entire folder over. See what we get out of it. Alright, looks like we are pretty much able to max out the um, USB 2.0 frequency on this thing. Now it's time for the fun part. That is still hitting off of something, isn't it? It's a little bit better than it was. As you can see, I've actually put a couple more strings on there, so it's not flinging back as wildly as it was before, but I don't know if it's still flying back at warp speed or what the heck is going on, but... Should be a lot better now than it was, but let's try this out. Let's try copying a couple of files. First to the old, well if I could put the stupid SD card in here, maybe we could actually try this out. Let's try copying a file onto the old drive, or well, the old thing. I don't care what file it is, just test it out here. You get about 27, 23, something like that, megabytes per second. Let's try copying it to the new one. I'm not expecting a huge performance increase, though. So, whoops. That's my file on the web server. Let's see what happens if we try copying it over to the new one. We'll make a folder for it, since that's what we're going to have to do anyway. Holy moly. Yeah, just a little bit faster. <laughs> yeah, it looks like it's topping out at about 40 megabytes per second. This card actually tops out at, I think, 32. So what we're getting right here is about what this card can do. And that's about it. Which, to me, actually is okay, now that I can max out this card's performance. I should be able to move files over a lot faster. But that's still not good enough. Let's try moving a file over from, uh, I don't know, from the main file drive over here. Let's see what happens. Let's try copying over this video right here. 2.23 gigabytes in size. Let's first try it. I'm going to close that. Let's first try it to the old drive. Let's see what it does. So... All right, we're at about 57, 69, so it is going pretty fast. Um, so the speed that you were seeing before is pretty much a limit of the old uh, drive, or the old this SD card right here. But now let's try copying it over to here. See what we get. Again, just a little bit faster. But if I'm getting 81 megabytes out of it, that's definitely a much better transfer experience than it was on the other drive. But the real test is going to be trying to render a video onto that. But now, of course, I have to get all the other stuff set up. Looks weird seeing that uh, 1.78 terabytes free on that and seeing 1.05 free here, and that's it. That's about what it was before, so we should be alright. Let me uh, finish up with the rest of the file copying and moving, and we will get on with it. I'm going to say that even though this is running a little bit slower than it was uh, before, there actually is a reason for that, and that's I'm going to discuss that in a second, but this is actually a better performer than, uh, well, this... Seagate right here is performing better than the external drive over there was. Here's the reason why I'm thinking that, though. Um, on my old, like, the old setup that I had before I got this drive, I was using uh, what was, I think it was a main concept encoder, which is a slightly different uh, encoding method than what I'm using right now. I'm using the Sony AVC. 
It was not an AVC, or at least I don't think it was an AVC setup, and it, that particular encoding codec was designed to be faster, even if you selected prioritize quality over speed. So it would drop frames and it would just cause some kinds of problems all over the board. Particularly when I tried to render at 15 megabits, which is what this is at right now, 15 megabits with decent quality, it would um, create these like files that, while they were small, about 2 gigabytes in size, or maybe a little bit more than that, but still, they were decently sized files. And they weren't like this at all. That's what the file size is on this one right now. The codec that I was using before was a main concept codec. I don't know if it was the... if it's an AVC codec or not, or codec, but it doesn't really matter. The thing about that one is that it's designed more for speed rendering, and it doesn't really work very well when it comes down to fine-grained edits and, like, quality. It doesn't really work well with multiple different layers of, um, video. Like this is. As you can see, I've got a little overlay there, and I've got the actual video, and then I've got different audio feeds in there as well. But it doesn't really work that well. In order to get a decent quality video, I had to turn the bandwidth, or the bitrate, up to about 60 megabits per second, and crank it up to the highest possible quality that it could give out. Just in order to not only give me a decent quality file, but also to stop my video editor from crashing, because if I just kept it at highest quality at 15 megabits, which is what this is rendering at right now, it would crash my video editor because it wasn't able to actually handle that. Um, this right now, what I'm using, is actually the Sony AVC encoding codec, which is a little bit slower. As you can probably see, it is definitely a lot slower than the main concept one is, but it creates, it gives a much better quality output at lower band, or lower bitrate, 15 megabits, which is what this is at right now. So, a file that used to be humongous, like we're talking a file that we're going from about 7 gigabytes, almost 8 gigabytes for a 20 minute long file to what I'm going to project is going to be maybe about 1.5 to somewhere between 1.5 and, and 2 gigabytes, which to me is a much, a much better solution than the absolutely massive files which don't even mean anything anyway because YouTube's going to recompress it and it's going to lower that bandwidth down, or bitrate down, I keep calling it bandwidth, it's bitrate going to just lower the bitrate down anyways. So this will be fine, and in fact, this is actually rendering a lot faster than it did on my T500 with the USB hard drive, so I'm still thinking that I'm getting better performance out of this than I did with the other drive, and I'm still pretty pleased, even if this is not that much of a performance increase, I'm still happy because I'm able to free up all this space for storing other junk. So, we'll definitely be okay anyway. Last thing that I need to do is move all of the stuff on that needs to go into the external drive back on over onto the. Well, me, all the external files need to go back onto there. So, all this crap that's right here needs to go onto the other drive. And this is going to take a while. This is the last thing that I need to do. And then I can. Um, finish up the rest of this junk and call this video good. Let's take a look at this newly rendered file. Ah, take a look at that quality. Heh! <laughs> Camera doesn't even like that blue lettering. That's kind of funny. No drop frames that I can see. That's about enough of that. I have to reboot this computer because I just ran updates. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do that, and then I'll come back. I'm also going to check the BIOS and make sure that there are no settings that I need to touch. I'm not sure if I've ever done it on video, but I've had a couple of people ask me to play this six final render video on my main computer, which happens to be this T410. This is the s almost 700 megabyte file, so this is the raw, shall we say, 
Oh, I think it's almost uncompressed, but it's an MP4 file, but still, let's just go ahead and try it out. Let's see what it does. Didn't notice anything there. Yeah, it chops up a little bit, like, almost unnoticeably with that high-res particle effect there, but other than that, I'd actually say that this is pretty good. Can't move my mouse. There we go. Stop that. Alright. So that's pretty much it. Uh, flush player is installing in the background. And I'm transferring files over from the other drive, which is still going to take a little bit of time. So, that's the last thing that I need to do, though. Alright, there you can see the drive usage now. That's really the only drive that I have to deal with, but I might even have an upgrade for that coming soon as well. But, basically all that's left to do is to move a couple of files around and optimize all this setup. Re-image all of these drives, say goodnight to this Western Digital Drive, and then edit and upload this video. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. And uh, this is CP666 signing off. I hope to see you next time. Till then.